Okay, recording started. So, hello, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, welcome to the Uni Community Hours December edition. My name is Raúl Osuna. I am release engineer for Uni, and uh, yes, welcome. We I hope uh, there are a lot of uh, good news for you in this uh, edition, and I will start with the agenda for today. So first of all, I'm going to talk about Uyuni 2023.12, what is new. Uh, as you might already know, it was released uh, yesterday. So there is a little Christmas present, kind of. And then uh, Victor will go next. And he actually has two presentations, one about saline deployment and setup, and another one about why uh, he was trying to kill the soul master. So without further ado, let's go with the first point. So it's Uyuni 2023.12, what's new? And in the meantime, you can tell me whether uh, you already installed it uh, uh, or you read about that. Um, you can use the chat or send some reaction. No need to talk if you don't want to. So what is new? Uh, there is support for actually four new uh, distributions, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro 5.5, OpenSUSE Lib Micro 5.5, Raspberry Pi OS 12, uh, that is uh, based upon uh, Debian 12 pretty much, and Amazon Linux 2023. Uh, in addition to the new releases, uh, there is also uh, a new feature for CLM, that, uh, a filter by package build date. Uh, there is one important CVE that got fixed uh, in this update. And also the Uyuni tools to help uh, using Uyuni as containers, Uyuni ADM and Uyuni CTL tools uh, were renamed to MGR ADM and MGR CTL so that this is a bit unified with uh, the enterprise product SUSE manager. And in addition, the shell completion was added to those tools. And that would be very much it regarding Uyuni. Uh, do you have questions about this? Yeah, I do. Is it supported to upgrade the containerized version of Uyuni from 2023-10 to 2023-12? I actually, Cedric, maybe can confirm. Uh, well, there are probably not uh, enough changes here to justify an update. You just change the image that should work, but never tried, not yet. Okay. Thanks. Julio? Remember something important for the server. For now, this is just a... Mm, I don't remember if it is marked as POC or technology preview, right, Cedric? Yes. Okay, good reminder. Is there anything else you would like to talk about this new release of Uni? Okay, then we can go to the next topic. And it's actually Victor is going to talk about saline deployment and setup. So Victor, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Let me share the screen. Hope you hear me well. And you should see the screen now, I think. Is it okay? Now, yeah. Now we can see the hard week side. Yes, yeah, we uh, great. Actually, the Saline is my home uh, pet project, let's say, and it was grown as a POC for one particular customer. And actually, uh, for the last two hack weeks, I was working on preparing the Saline to uh, release uh, as a, a, let's say, extension for, for Solg, actually, as it uh, intended to to help to control deployment the states with salt and also provide some 
uh, metrics uh, for monitoring the uh, procedure of deployment, the states, and uh, yeah, actually mostly related to salt only. And uh, currently, it uh, depends on salt uh, salt itself, so it's not really uh, very well, uh, let's say, um, binded with the internals of Uni, but uh, mostly to salt. Uh, but in the uh, latest uh, hack week, I was focused on uh, the uh, easiest way to deploy the saline, and I will share the. I think it's better to share the link to GitHub page and uh, the chat. So uh, actually, uh, on this page, you can find the uh, easy way to. Uh, Easy way to deploy it on the uh, existing Uni server. Actually, it's compatible with all the latest releases, and you can try it uh, quite easy. Just you need to add the repo on the server. Let me show you how it works. So, in this case, I'm adding the uh, release version of the Saline. Uh, just to make it a bit faster, and then so it will install two packages. One of them is Salin itself with the um, uh, default configuration, the tool for um, helping to set up it on the server, and additionally the package with the sources for python so uh, basically two packages and after installing it you have to run the uh, lean setup with the parameters one and additionally it has the list of parameters but the default one is just uh, yes for all of the questions and it will use the uh, default um, uh, certificate for Uyuni as the certificate for the HTTP service it provides for metrics, etc. Uh, actually, it still has no any capabilities to control the uh, uh, the deploy deployment process itself. So it just provides the metrics. But on the next releases, uh, I'm going to implement the uh, recent, uh, let's say, features which is not yet implemented and. Will focus on also on um, adding these features to be controlled from the web UI side. So uh, in this case, uh, let's try to predict that we already have the uh, monitoring server installed. And uh, if you check the dashboards, you will see the default ones. Okay. So, it so uh, what you need to do to install the dashboard for Salim, you just need login for sure. This one is my monitoring server. Let's go to formulas. Uh, additionally, it has two extra formulas, uh, Salim, Gafan, and Prometheus. Let's save it. And then for Prometheus, we need to enable scrape config for Salim. And for Grafana, we will add two extra by default. It, it's enabled the dashboards for Salim with the Uyuni dashboard combined and the uh, distinct uh, dashboard with the a kind of uh, prof internal profiling of for salt states. And I will show you in a moment the how it looks like. So uh, let, let's apply the high state. It will take a few seconds. Done. So let's check one more time for the the dashboards so as you can see there are two extra dashboards appended we server with saline 
and uh, Salim state job. So if we check for the first one, we will see the extra Salim panel. Actually, it represents three distinct uh, uh, kind of views for the uh, salt internals. First one representing different uh, uh, different salt events combined by the type of these events. And the second one is actually combining the um, the uh, minions by the activity of how many minions for active in last one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, etc. So you can easily identify the, uh, the amount of the active minions. And the third one actually representing a more detailed info about the function types called and returned by the uh, by the minions. So it represents actually the uh, chart uh, on the both sides of the baseline. One of them represents the requests to the minion and the uh, bottom one to the, the actually responses from the minion. So if we initiate something like uh, it, it will not be that visible as the currently I have too few minutes running. So uh, I would suggest you to play with it, especially it could be quite uh, funny to see these charts when, if you have the large amount of the minions. So uh, let me show you the default example. So you can see something like this actually, but only when you have a significant amount of the minions and the significant activity on this old event bus. So in in my test case, I don't have a really huge list of the of the minions. So and the state jobs actually represents the uh, states applied on the minions and you also can uh, perform a kind of profiling with the with this uh, dashboard as you can see the uh, average duration of the uh, state apply and uh, for the different cases if they are successful or failed and it also shows the source of these states which sls is used and to which state id and function was called and uh, on the top uh, on the top panel, you can see the list of the states actually applied. In this particular case, there was just a high state applied for the uh, only just one targeted minion. It was actually the uh, the monitoring server itself, and that that it. Uh, so uh, in in other cases, you can individually apply the uh not the high state but but the targeting the states individually and you will see the uh, list of the states and the process of deployment uh, in the combination let's say of the uh, list of the targeted uh, clients and the uh, clients who actually already responded on this uh, state apply and what was the status of the state apply and you can easily identify the overall let's say uh, process and uh, yeah and i think that's it for the first presentation if you have any questions feel free to ask and yeah. any questions it looks like no questions so uh, if not uh, you can bring them up later if you think about anything else Otherwise, you can go ahead with the second one. Yeah, in any case, feel free to uh, provide any feedback and uh, I will be glad to uh, to hear any extra ideas. What should we add to the uh, monitoring, etc. And what should be actually the ways of controlling the uh, state apply, etc. So feel free to reach me and uh, provide any kind of feedback. So. Um, Let's switch to the next one. This one will be uh, more, let's say, complex and uh, condensed with the uh, with the slides. So actually, first of all, uh, I will show you the agenda. It's a list of the different questions and only for some of them I have the proper answers right now. And so for some of them I'm still keep 
working on the identifying how to avoid such situation and what should be improved and uh, what way. Uh, so, uh, just to give you a short background, actually this story begins more than a year ago with uh, one particular bug when the, one of the customer reported that uh, in their environment they have quite strange situation when the uh, salt master is uh, one of the uh, sub-processes of, of the salt master is consuming too much memory and CPU and uh, in most cases it, it's killed by uh, out of memory killer and uh, they have no idea what's going on and uh, on uh, investigating this issue we found that the root cause of the problem is actually the list of the uh, proxies they have and the actually the not the proxies by itself but mostly the salt broker service on the proxy site which uh, should actually aggregate the connections from the minions uh, from all of the salt minions to the zero MQ channels and uh, push them back to the uh, master in this case so in some cases if the uh, if the master for some reason is unavailable for the salt broker salt broker is collecting all of the messages from the uh, minion and uh, if the list of the uh, broker is significant all of them is co are collecting actually the huge amount of these events and once the connection restored to the uh, master all of these events from the salt broker almost immediately pushed to the uh, master and uh, the master is trying to uh, handle all of these events in the quite limited amount of time with the limited resources let's say so in case if you have a significant number of minions uh, i am talking not just about the tens or hundreds but most most probably about the thousands of minions and in some cases there could be hundreds of proxies uh, the situation is not really uh, good if you have for some reason uh, the uh, salt uh, master service stopped for, for a while and on restoring the salt master service most probably it could be killed just by the collected uh, salt authentication messages from the minion as uh, they will the, these messages will be repeated by the uh, minions and collected by the salt broker and then as i said pushed to the um, to the to the master at once so uh, in, in this case we call it as a kind of dem effect and uh, in this case uh, you will could you could also notice the huge uh, memory consumptions of one of the particular sub processes of the salt master and one of the uh, challenges I had uh, was the identify the uh, reason why this happened on the uh, on the salt master side, and uh, the other problem that it's really hard to um, to reproduce this issue on the uh, limited amount of minions, and in the test case, uh, test suite, let's say, uh, it's hard to reproduce this just because you unable to reach such amount of minions and even proxies. And I was looking for the um, for the solutions to uh, reproduce this issue isolate in isolated way, let's say. So on the master side, you most probably will see something like this. In this case, I had the set pods title uh, model installed. It's not available with the uh, with the repos, but can be installed with pip. And in this case, you will see the extra name of the salt master subprocess. In all, all of the cases we captured, this uh, issue was the root cause was related to the event publisher process. In this case, you can see that it consumes too much memory and also quite significant amount of CPU. As, despite of the workers, it also do the well, quite significant workload. So uh, in some amount of time, uh, this uh, event publisher process will be killed and all of the rest actually uh, will be almost idle just because it will not be really possible to process all of the e events after killing this particular sub process. So uh, in this case, Salt Master is able to uh, receive some of the messages from the minion, but it will not respond on them. 
Uh, and you can also see this uh, kind of message on the uh, on the kernel messages that uh, out of memory killer was initiated for the particular process. And on the uh, log side of the master, you must you will most probably see these kind of message with the huge traceback, and then it will uh, produce a lot of different uh, tracebacks showing that. Uh, Key is unavailable, etc. The actually the tracebacks could be different, but this one uh, probably will come first on the on the list. So, uh, as I said, it's uh, not really uh, easier to uh, reproduce this uh, issue on the uh, let's say isolated manner uh, with the limited amount of uh, minions and resources, and uh, it's. Uh, really important to find out the uh, root cause of the uh, this particular situation. What what's going on inside? And uh, on as the uh, uh, let's say example of the similar situation, if it's way better to have uh, kind of stress test conditions for any part of the uh, product to uh, prevent. Similar situation on having on the highway or under your hood, and it, it way better to have this situation on the specially prepared room and uh, specially prepared condition to uh, react on this event. So, um, uh, as I said, the reproducing this issue with limited resources and in an isolated way is the challenge by itself. And the next point that it's also important to monitor the uh, used resources to understand when the uh, when the uh, this situation could appear or, or if it's possible in this uh, combination of the different parameters to appear uh, to face this situation or not. So uh, uh, I was trying to perform different tests with different conditions with the uh, as I said, limited resources of having just one laptop. And actually, I was almost in the condition on the picture before, but just because I was keeping my CPU for a week about uh, 75 degrees uh, almost constantly. So uh, first of all, I was trying to use Evil Minions project. Actually, it's not really uh, feels good for this particular case just because the Evil Minion Evil Minions itself is consuming uh, too much resources and it's not really possible to reach such even trade from the, uh, even uh, in this case, Evil Minion to the master to uh, see this similar situation as the customer has. And yeah, uh, the, uh, luckily I was remember that uh, in one of the uh, learning Tuesday, we had before one of my colleagues uh, created a uh, Rusty Minion, as it was called. Actually, it's the small implementation of the Minion with the Rust, which was able just to authenticate to the master. And uh, it was exactly what I need to this test. Uh, and actually, I just have to slightly modify this uh, source to make this um, tool authentication authenticating in in let's say bust mode to uh, repeat the authentication again and again and i also added the list of the extra let's say fake uh, minions and actually these uh, this list of 5000 5, minions and uh, the key was generated for all of them and this uh, tool is repeating the uh, authentication attempt for uh, randomly for all of them uh, constantly and uh, with the uh, with the control in the amount of such processes we can uh, control the event rate to the to the master in this case so uh, what can we get and what uh, actually uh, what did the outcome of the uh, this research so uh, it was the first try of running this test with the default focus threads set to eight uh, for the uh, salt master and the only changed for the uh, test suite server was the in increased number of cores set to eight as well and uh, as you can see the uh, uh, system load and the cpu load is quite high and uh, it was running for 
for a couple of days constantly with no any issues and uh, uh, the event rate was about I think three uh, two hundred twenty authentication per seconds actually and uh, quite significant amount of total authentication but uh, in this case the uh, salt master was able to handle all of them uh, with the small uh, gap of the uh, actual time of the re receiving this authentication uh, attempt and uh, answering on, on, on it so uh, then i tried to increase the worker threads to 16 and actually uh, the situation has changed but uh, i had to stop this test before the uh, om uh, initiated but in in any case if i was if i if i would try to keep this test running it will finally uh, will be finished with the ohm killer so um actually the situation changed and as you can see the rate of the events actually this event rate was captured with the saline and uh, the chart exactly from the dashboard I show you in the previous presentation and in this case uh, as you can see the was only the worker threads was changed but the uh, event rate uh, dropped significantly actually the event rate here is not the incoming event rate but the actually processed events sort of authentication events so as you can see in case of uh, adding extra worker threads you will get the uh, reduced speed of the process in the uh, salt of indications so uh, in uh, increasing the worker threads way more to up to 32 the uh, speed is dropped significantly more so it's uh, average rate was uh, just 42 uh, authentication per seconds with the max pa uh, maximum pikes uh, on stopping for, uh, 420 uh, actually the spikes was happened only after stopping the the storm process from the client and uh, it was the events collected on the master side uh, processed uh, lately on, on the on the master side not not immediately on on, on the live manner let's say so it actually trying to process its its own backlog in this case so in, even uh, on adding extra uh, worker threads we get the situations uh, situation way worse and the average rates drop even more significantly and the uh, uh, it was another attempts with the setting extra course adding extra course increasing and decreasing the um, uh, worker threads so and the finally the outcome of this research was the following table and uh, it, in brief actually uh, i want to ask you to check the uh, uh, this parameter uh, uh, worker threads i mean uh, it makes no any sense to increase this parameter more than uh, the number of cpus assigned to the uh, so the manager of salt uh, or the server than the salt master is running so uh, in case of adding extra worker threads you get the situation when the when the, you have the large amount of workers by in but in this case they are trying to compete to each other for the resources and the kernel is switching the context between these processes too often and actually it's it just a huge waste of resources on on switching these processes so it makes no any sense to set the work sets so high so um, uh, general idea here is to keep it slightly lower than the number of core assigns assigned to the uh, salt master server and uh, um it, it's exactly what i just said so um and uh, just a small note here that in this particular test i was focused only on the salt side and uh, totally ignoring the uh, java part and the database uh, as it was not really um, uh, used in this case so uh, authentication events are not passed to the uh, 
um, to the Java and uh, not consuming the much on the database side. So uh, what's next? I was also trying to identify the root cause of the huge memory consumption, and I was using trace malloc uh, model for the, for the Python. And uh, the root cause actually of the memory consumption in the, is the way of handling all of the incoming messages with the tornado. It creates a lot of the internal callbacks inside, and all of these callbacks created in advance actually consume a lot of memory. So, um, actually, the root cause of this issue on the uh, Saltmaster side, when you see the huge memory consumption, is actually the way of handling these events on uh, on the salt layer, salt layer with the tornado in this case. So. And if we check the YAPI profiling and the number of calls inside the code of the of this particular subprocess of Salt Master, we will also find that uh, most of them also related to tornado. And currently, I'm focusing on the identifying the ways how to reduce this uh, memory consumption on the Salt Master side. So that's all for me. I hope you are not get scared, but uh, at least we know the situation and uh, have some plan already to reduce the. Thank you, Victor. Let's go back to the slides. Uh, is there uh, any yeah, questions? I see some messages. Uh, ah, yeah, from Miguel Rastominion. Yeah, actually, it it was created initially by Alex. Uh, and it saves me a lot of time to implement in this way to, uh, to let's say, uh, produce such amount of authentication events from the client. And actually, it can produce way more than 300 events per second. Uh, and yeah, in this case, if you see the master consuming uh, almost everything on the uh, virtual machine then the vast minion on the client side is consuming just about two percent of the resources of the vm so i'll have to try it <laughs> uh yeah uh, just uh, <laughs> just as the uh, a kind of warning. I haven't published any sources just because it's quite dangerous to use them, or <laughs> especially on the production server. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, as Alex said, it, it just actually this was Minion do the authentication attempt and not doing much on the uh, on on the salt la layer. Let's say so. It just ask uh, the master to authenticate, but uh, not checking the uh, any response from it. So okay. it's exactly what what I was looking for for this particular test. So yeah. Nice. Thanks, Victor. Nice work. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> Any other question or comment for Victor? Maybe for the first presentation, if you thought about that, meanwhile. Okay, I take it as a no. Uh, any general question or even about the new uni release that you could think of? Don? Okay. Uh, just about the new uni release. Um... To clarify the answer to Don, uh, no update doesn't work in the with the container for now. The etc the system upgrade the, the scheme upgrade files are hidden in the volumes. So there's there is a bug that we need to fix still. Okay, thank you for the note, Cedric. And before wrapping up, I would like to uh, remind you that uh, for everyone, also from, uh, or not also, but especially from people in the community, if you want to present anything, uh, we will be very happy to allow that. And yes, you can reach me directly or you can use the, the channels, uh, GitHub, uh, Gitter, or whatever, and we will be very happy to have sessions from the community. 
And without that, uh, the next session will take the usual last Friday of the month in January, and it will be already a, a new year. So I want to wish you a, a very nice new year. Uh, Merry Christmas for the one for the ones who celebrated. Thanks for attending, and see you in the next edition. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Yeah, and hope you thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Hey. Bye bye. Thank you. Enjoy bye. your holidays. Bye. Have fun. Happy New Year. See you.